Chapter 21 And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. And Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and the child, and sent her away. And she departed, and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and set, down, set her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bowshot. For, she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and lift up her voice, and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thou thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad to drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran with his mother. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. Now therefore swear unto me by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son. But according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water, which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, I wot not who hath done this thing, neither didst thou tell me, yet neither yet heard I of it but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven new lambs of the flock by themselves, and Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs which thou hast set by thyself, themselves? And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. Wherefore he called the place Beersheba, because that they swear both of them. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech rose up, and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called thereon the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. And Isaac is born. Sarah nurses him. Well, Abraham circumcises him when he's eight days old. And as God has commanded him, and Sarah nurses him, and then when he is weaned, they have a celebration, a feast. But here at the feast, we're coming to something else. Now, Hagar's son, Ishmael, would have been about 13 or 14 years of age about this time. And Sarah saw Ishmael mocking her child, Isaac. 
And the jealousy that had been there when Hagar got pregnant and she couldn't get pregnant and uh, all the rest of it all just came back up again. And she goes to Abraham and she says, cast this woman out. Her son is not going to be heir with my son. I'm not going to split it. Everything that's there is going to be Isaac's. And it was very, very upsetting to Abraham because he loved Ishmael. Ishmael was one of his sons. But God said unto Abraham, don't worry about it. I'll look after him. I'll look after Hagar. And uh, you listen to what Sarah has said. Isaac will be your heir. He will be the one that your line will be carried on. He will be the one through whom the covenant will be made. And so, but understand, I will make a nation of Isaac because he is, uh, for, uh, sorry, I will make a nation of Ishmael because he is thy son. He will be looked after. So again, you're going to find this phrase, and Abraham rose up early in the morning. In other words, he had the dream, he got the information, and he got up and he was about doing it. And that is the huge difference between Abraham and just about anybody else. Abraham didn't argue about it, didn't quiver about it didn't question about it. If he got the instruction, he did it. And that's what made him such a great man. Anyway, you got to remember now, we know that the, there are inaccuracies in this. This, this record that we have uh, has been altered somewhat by the people who transcribed it. But the story might be generally accurate, but there are details that won't be. And so... It talks about uh, Abraham gave the bread and the bottle of water, gave to Hagar, and she went off. And she put the child under a shrub. Well, now, this kid probably would have been 13 or 14. He, would have, he could have been almost as big as her. I mean, there were children that were that age who were on their own. At 16, you were considered a man. So this, this kid was pretty well largely grown. So in a part of this, he wasn't necessarily cast the child under one of the shrubs. Probably not right. But not that, that way. Uh, unless something was wrong. He was horribly sick at the time, whatever. Anyway, she goes about a bow shot. So bow shot might be about 100 yards. Maybe a little more. But that would have been a good bow shot in those days. And God hears the voice of the child, and the angel appears to her and says, Hey, don't worry about it, Hagar. we got to do this. Everything's fine. Here's a well of water. Give the lad uh, some water to drink, and then uh, you guys will look after you. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and he dwelt. And it says, became an archer. We're not really sure what that means. It talks about earlier on in the blessing and description of how he was. He'd be a wild man, meaning that his uh, he would be... Um, so a person who lived in the wilderness, he would be somebody that his hand would be against everybody else, everybody else would be against him, which would mean he would be undisciplined, perhaps. He would be an outcast in one shape or form. The archer might be somebody who uh, was a person that dealt with weapons, maybe a soldier of fortune, could have been a number of things. That's all we know, and that's all speculation. She takes a wife from Egypt for him, for him and... Uh, and at the last, Abimelech and Phicol, his uh, fellow, his chief of staff, shows up and they uh, make the covenant with uh, Abraham and they deal with the well issue that uh, is bothering Abraham because Abraham dug a well. That, that was amazing things. I mean, you dig down 100 feet and get a well of water, and that made the difference between life and death. So somebody stole your well. They basically almost could have guaranteed your death. But Abraham and Abimelech come to a deal on this, and they get it all settled. And they made the covenant at Beersheba. And there's a city called Beersheba there today.